That's right, back with another workshop build update. And in today's video, we actually frame the door. That's right, Sam decided where he wants to put his door and he puts it in the, the spot. Hey everybody, Sam here and welcome back to Sam Craft. In today's video, I'm gonna be continuing working on the DIY workshop build that I'm doing at our new property. If you haven't seen the previous videos leading up to this, there's a link to that full playlist down below. And if you're here from the future, that same link will take you to here and beyond, to infinity and beyond. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a handful of different things. Most importantly, or most noteworthy, is actually showing you how to frame a doorway into a finished framed wall not one that's sided insulated and all that kind of stuff but one that is framed and installed so it will show you how to add a header king stud jack studs all the kind of stuff to a load bearing wall in addition to that i'm going to be finished covering the roof with the underlayment in preparation of some rain and snow to make sure that roof stays dry and i'll finish up with a little bit of fix work because i messed up something with the rafters so without further ado let's jump into it I gotta say doing the first course with the ladder or while on the ladder is a big difference from what I was doing in the last video which is trying to start it from up there on top of the roof mostly that's because I am not a roofologist I'm not a height matician and I do not like getting close to the edge of the roof so doing it from the ladder was a lot more I guess personal labor but it gave me a much nicer product in the end and more important than that I felt safe and comfortable the whole time while I did that so that being said, that's it for ladder time. Now I do need to get up on top of the roof. I've got one more course just like this one to run. And then the last one is going to be one that overlays the ridge all the way across and I'm done. I'm also not going to film that for you guys. I think you've kind of got the idea of what it takes to attach underlayment. You just put it flat and straight and staple it down. That's about it. There's no rocket science to it because it's not rockets. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to the next step, which will be a lot more interesting for you guys. First thing I want to do is work on framing up the doorway. For that, I'm gonna go with a rough opening of about 44 inches, I believe. Um, what I'm gonna do is build my own door for this workshop. I did consider and I priced getting like a pre-hung exterior door. Those are around $300 for a 36 inch wide. And I'm a little concerned that it's just a little bit too narrow for what I really will need. At the same time, I don't want to build the double style doors you very commonly see on buildings. I don't need a five foot wide door. I don't need a six foot wide door. I have that in my current workshop and 99% of the time that door, only one side is open. The other side has junk stored against it as if it was a solid wall. So I'm gonna make this a single door workshop. It's gonna be about 44 inches, I think but we'll get our final dimensions and everything once the wall's framed up. Let's go. If you'll notice, I have my platform shoes on. I'm up here and this is the top of what's gonna be my door. I'm gonna make this rough opening 81 inches tall. That's really tall for a shed or workshop door. And the reason I'm doing that is in the event I ever cheap out, or I guess not really cheap out, but decide to put an exterior door in here, you want to rough frame those usually 81 inches as well. So this is going to allow me to reuse my header and then fill in the sides if I have to. Down the road, if I ever change my mind, this is not going to come back to bite me. So I've got my, what are going to be my king studs marked here and here. These are the original wall studs. Obviously, I'm not messing with anything yet. I'm going to leave them there. And so I'm going to measure in. I'm going to add me a jack stud here, a jack stud here to support a header that is going to go in this area. And then I will have to cut these out. I'm not really concerned about the roof sagging or, or falling or kind of moving at all when I cut these out because I have my double top plate that does span. There are no joints up here on this top one. And I think we're gonna be fine given that this is actually a very lightweight roof. It's only got the OSB on top so far and there's not much stress on it right now. 
That being said, if I cut it and it sags, I'll show you guys how to jack up your roof, but I hope I don't have to do that. What I'm going to do next is go ahead and find my width here for my beam. So it looks like it's at 46 and three quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and make that out of two two by sixes and some half inch plywood sandwiched in between to give myself a nice thick beam, the full thickness of my wall and to appropriately disperse the weight from above across to that beam, down to my jack studs and down to the floor. I got my two two by sixes cut for the header. And then I'm um, probably the only guy in the world that's using Baltic birch plywood to build a header. But it's what I had left over in my workshop at home. And it's what I brought for this. So in my opinion, because that's all I really can offer you, the half inch plywood is only spacing it out so your walls are flush inside and outside the building. I don't think these are really critical for load dispersal because everything's resting on the two by sixes that are on their ed edges. So for me, I'm gonna be fine doing this, building kind of a sandwich that way. And I think that's gonna be plenty strong enough for this build application. But again, not a professional, so maybe it's wrong. You might wanna double check it and do whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna use my pass load gun for this and I'll be shooting three inch nails through here to keep everything good and tight together. And now I can use my flush cut pull saw and trim the plywood off to make everything nice and pretty on the ends. I have my beam cut and it is right here. And I also have my jack studs. These are cut to seven and a half inches tall, which is one and a half inches shorter than my overall rough opening from the floor to the top. It's one and a half inches shorter because it's gonna be resting on the bottom plate of my wall. I'm gonna go ahead and hold these up right adjacent to my wall studs that are in place. Nail them up, then I'll be able to set the beam up here, mark, and cut my top double studs up here as well to fit the beam into place. We'll hold the beam up into place and Hold it there on the line. Yes, I could just measure and get the same exact thing, but I like to do this a lot. And this is called relative dimensioning. It's where you hold an actual object up in place, cut it to fit rather than measuring and transcribing those marks with a ruler or a measuring device. It's a fancy way of saying tape measure. Uh, it's the exact same thing I did with the rafters. And it's just something I found that works really good for me. You don't have to think a whole lot. You don't have to do a lot of math and you still get really good results in the end. I will transcribe the mark all the way around on these wall studs so that I can see it to cut it out with a circular saw, which is what I will be doing next. And <laughs> we're right at the head of that nail. So hopefully we won't cut a nail, but carbide tooth blades should cut through it fine on the circular saw. I'll put on my safety glasses and uh, let's go. Let her rip, tater chip. Okay. Might have been a pucker factor of two there. It's all right. We have cut through our wall and I'm happy to say it definitely still appears like we have the curve of our blade. So my roof has not started to collapse in on me. So there you go. Did you win or lose your bet? Hope you won. Timber. Mm -hmm. 
Need a persuasion device. All right. Well, all things considered, yes, it would have been absolutely a lot easier to do while this wall was on the floor, but indecisive Sam had to make it hard on himself. Either way, interesting for you guys, right? Last thing to do is go ahead and cut out the bottom plate here. This is gonna be taken away so the door is flush with the floor. For that, I'm gonna use my flush cut saw, stick it along the stud and go all the way down to the plywood. Ta-da, a doorway. With the doorway done, you logically would think the next thing Sam's gonna do is frame up his windows. Well, Sam's not logical. <laughs> Actually, we have some rain that's gonna be heading in tomorrow, and we are ready at this point, almost, to install the siding. So we're gonna change gears, not frame up the front windows, and we're gonna take our next step towards putting siding on the workshop. Whenever I did the rafters and I marked and cut my bird's mouth and everything for them, I did not Realize that I did it wrong. Well, not wrong, but it's gonna cause me an extra step here. I actually cut the bird's mouth double deep. The depth is the thickness of the, both the top plate and the double top plate of my wall. That's not an issue until you get to this point of the project and you're like, hmm, I've covered up my nailer for my siding. So what we're gonna do next is cut a bunch of blocking to go in between these studs in the wall cavities and give us an appropriate place to act as a nailer for attaching the siding to the workshop. It's a little bit of double work because I cut my bird's mouth too deep and kind of consumed both the top and the double top plate of the wall. So normally you won't have to do this, but it's what I gotta do to make things right. So let's go ahead and do it so we can make things right. Here we go guys, all the blocking is done. Now we're ready, we can go ahead and start hanging the siding next. It feels really nice to finally have an officially framed up rough opening of a doorway. As you saw, I put it in the center of my long wall. I decided to do that because my mental layout, I haven't got an official really awesome layout, but mentally I'm thinking that when you go in the front door, I'll have an island, maybe something kind of like tool wall behind me, and that's where I'll probably talk to you guys the most, and I'll have like a workbench here in the middle. Then I'm thinking, you know, stage right, or as you're viewing to the left, I don't know, that's going to be Laser Town and CNC World. So that whole wall of the workshop, 12 feet wide, I'll have the Shapoko Pro sitting there, and then I'll have my laser engravers and something amazing in that area. We'll call that Robotsville or Laser Town or CNCville. And then stage left, or as you're looking to the right, I figure that's going to be where more traditional woodworking tools are going to go. Things such as my bandsaw, which is on wheels, my lathe, my oscillating tools, sander, and stuff like that. Oh yeah, drill press too. Like I said, I don't have a very detailed layout. I haven't honestly had the, the free time and the mental downtime to be able to think about and lay it out and get really fancy. I'm not concerned about that because the overall square footage difference between my current shop, which is where we are right now, to the new one I'm building is 16 or 14 square foot difference. Not a lot, especially considering with the layout of the new shop, it is 100% workshop space. Whereas this one, I've always had the main workshop door 
but there's been this spur over to my old home office and storage space. So I've not only had the workshop, I always had to leave that doorway and walkway open to the other side. So from that sense, I'm not really concerned about putting myself in a tiny little box and being unhappy with it. Especially considering that, yep, I'm still going to be selling my rigid cast iron top table saw. Whether that means I go with something totally not table saw, or I just kind of scale down and get a smaller saw, I'm not really sure yet. But I do know for sure this one is going to be sold and not travel across state lines to the new property. Outside of the doorway framing, obviously having the roof underlayment done was a huge accomplishment and a very important step. Making sure that no water comes through the roof down onto the plywood floor feels great. While it's still not totally dried in, we are ready to dry it in on the next step. So that's just one step further to making sure as winter time and the season of mud, rain and snow really hits the area, I'm preserving what has been a really expensive build inside and it lasts longest and does the best it can. Speaking of the really expensive build, the total costs for this workshop so far is 4,000 bucks. Now I ordered everything in December of 2021, so prices will definitely vary, but a lot of you have asked, so assuming you're still here at this point, there you go. I paid $4,000 for all the material to be delivered all at once. That should be absolutely everything from a complete workshop build minus roofing, paint, and I think my door hinges and stuff like that. Otherwise, the complete shell. Well, that's going to be it for this part, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this series. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it and it was horrible and terrible, give me a thumbs up to let me know too. Be sure and stay tuned for the next part of the workshop build, which will be installing the siding and making it legitimately a dry shell. If you guys have any questions or comments about this build series video, something I covered, not good enough, or you just have comments, you know where to put them. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.